The next series of studies have looked at the timing of androgen deprivation therapy because it's become apparent that androgen deprivation therapy is itself a toxic treatment. I say it become apparent. Uh, it's curious, really, that this kind of thing is reinvented. We knew it was toxic in the 60s, and we've suddenly rediscovered that it's toxic in the 90s. So things have changed. In the old days, patients were treated when they had metastatic disease, and usually when they had symptomatic metastatic disease. And increasingly, there's been a shift across to this side of the curve where patients are treated early. And of course, they then get estrogens or uh, androgen deprivation <coughs> for a longer period of time. Now, this um, is a study which looked at the use of androgen deprivation therapy using the anti androgen capacidex. Um, this is the early prostate cancer trial. It's still the largest trial that's ever been undertaken in urological cancer, 8,000 patients. In fact, it was probably better to describe it as three separate trials with the data amalgamated. One in North America, another one in Europe, and another one in Scandinavia. The North American study looked at the use of Casadex in association with radical prostatectomy. The European trial looked at Casadex in association with radical therapy. And the Scandinavian trial looked at um, the comparator of surveillance. And these were the results in terms of overall survival. 8,000 odd patients, no difference. <coughs> You can imagine all that money spent by AstraZeneca and 8,000 patient trial running three continents, two continents, and no difference. But a very informative trial. <coughs> the sub-analysis of this data, and uh, Professor Primer has alluded to this earlier, is one of the important things. If you look at the radical prostatectomy group here, the equivalence is just on the wrong side. Now, the confidence level is clearly overstepped. But if you also look at those patients who have locally advanced disease, they seem to do better. So the patients in Scandinavia who have locally advanced disease, treated early with androgen deprivation, did better. But those patients who have <coughs> screen-detected localized prostate cancer managed by radical prostatectomy tended to do worse, and there were some cardiovascular deaths, which resulted in the cessation of that, uh, of the use of antiandrogens post-radical prostatectomy in low-risk disease. But concurrently with that <coughs> was uh, a study which really um, complemented the data from the early prostate cancer trial. And this is a, a, a very famous, uh, or in urology circles, very famous series of trials run by Michel Boer on behalf of the URTC, bearing in mind John the <laughs> URTC. <laughs> um, and this is the URTC 22863, which looked at the combination of uh, radiotherapy for locally advanced prostate cancer uh, used in isolation or with extended hormone treatment. And this was published uh, in the, in the uh, Lancet um, in 2002. What you can see very clearly is those patients who receive androgen deprivation therapy for a period of at least two years get a clear and substantial benefit in terms of overall survival by comparison with those who are treated with radiotherapy alone. So this has become the standard of care, and that data has been consolidated with a further publication in 2009 showing that hormones for at least three years in high-risk patients are clearly beneficial um, in uh, prostate cancer. So that's a, tr a trial changing, um, or a series of, of, of uh, practice changing trials which have occurred. Now if you look further down the line in patients who've got uh, advanced or metastatic disease. This is a, another uh, practice-changing trial, MRC PRO3, run exclusively uh, in the UK by David Kirk, urologist in Glasgow, recently retired, and um, published uh, in the Journal of Urology in 1997. This was just short of 1,000 patients, um, and patients with either metastatic or advanced uh, localized prostate cancer were randomized to receive androgen deprivation therapy by orchidectin or GnRH analogs, either at the point of diagnosis uh, or when they develop symptoms. What that study showed was that there was no real difference in the outcome in patients with metastases, but in patients who had locally advanced disease, they seemed to do better. Um, however, the trial was heavily criticized for the simple reason that in the uh, 
standard treatment arm, this is patients receiving androgen deprivation therapy on progression. Um, some of them didn't get the androgen deprivation therapy at all, right to the point of death. So it was more a comment on how badly urology or prostate cancer was managed in some areas of the UK uh, than it was on whether this was an effective treatment. Now this data has been consolidated by another ERTC trial, 30891, which actually has done this rather better. And this has looked at patients with T0 to T4, N0, N0 prostate cancer, randomized to receive immediate androgen deprivation or deferred androgen deprivation, either with borchidectomy or GnRH analog therapy. And this is taken by uh, or a student who's a urologist in Bern on behalf of the RTCGU group. Now, one important thing about this is the finding in relation to the time of initiation of androgen deprivation. If we look at those patients on deferred treatment and we look at whether uh, they actually needed treatment at all, about 48% of the deferred treatment arm didn't need any androgen deprivation at all to the point of death. And that was because of intercurrent death, not prostate cancer death. And if we look at the um, sub-analysis of the patients treated in this trial, what we can see is this. If we look at patients under the age of 70 and stratify them according to the level of PSA, and if we take the patients over 70 and again stratify them according to the level of PSA and plot that on a forest plot, there are groups who actually benefit from the androgen deprivation early, and groups who don't. So if we take men under 70 with PSAs greater than 20, they seem to have a clear benefit from early androgen deprivation therapy. <coughs> if we take men who are over 70, only those patients who have PSAs over 50 actually benefit. So we can now stratify the use of androgen deprivation therapy in this group of patients. So rather than giving everybody ADT early on in the course of their disease and giving them all the associated side effects, uh, hot flushes, loss of bone, loss of muscle mass, loss of cognitive function, loss of libido, and all that goes with it, we can now defer treatment uh, on an evidence base, or with an evidence base, quite safely. Now, I mentioned that the androgen deprivation therapy was getting further and further um, to this side of the curve. And there are a number of trials uh, which are ongoing across the world, but there are two big trials which have been designed and run in the UK. One called the RADICALS trial, given post-radical prostatectomy for prostatectomy failures or high risk. And a second one called the STAMPEED trial. And I want to ha highlight the STAMPEED trial because it's a particularly innovative trial which will change practice, not only in the way androgens are delivered, but also in the way trials are conducted. And this is a trial uh, which looks at multi-arm, multi-stage methodology. One of the challenges that we have in surgery and oncology in general is how to trial or test multiple interventions all at once. Because if you think about the classical trial, it's standard treatment versus new treatment. And it takes a period of time to conduct a study like this. There's the setup, the ethics, the recruitment, and then the weight. So it's usually about eight to 10 years to get a result. Now, by testing out multiple arms all at once, using a multi-arm, multi-stage design, it's possible to foreshorten that time um, of assessment. And this is how it's done. Firstly, the concept that multiple, multiple therapies are used, um, it's important to check that when those multiple therapies are used in combination, that they're not toxic. So it's necessary to do a pilot study. Can we recruit the patients? And is the therapy safe? And we then go forward onto an activity study for phases two to three.